point, we can start with some introductions. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 2022 Graduate Open House. Um, this is day one, uh, session like five, six today. Um, this session will focus specifically on our MFA in graphic design program. My name is um, Jennifer Hewins. I am the grad recruitment coordinator at RISD. With me, I have my colleague, Sarah, and from the admissions office, Sarah, if you want to. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Sarah Lauk. Um, I also work in admissions as a coordinator, mostly with undergrad, but here today to help um, coordinate this event. Nice to have you all here. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, boy. Pass it to Bethany. Yes, I just did something sort of stupid, which was to, um, there we go. Never mind. Go. Um, hi, I am Bethany Johns, the grad program director in graphic design. And um, happy to happy to tell you about our fabulous program. I seem to have lost my Zoom window, though. I do. Uh -oh. um, so I'm not sure how to share the screen if I don't have the Zoom window. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Oh, Is good. That... that helps. All right. Shall I do it? Yep. All go right, here it. we go. There, I think you can see my screen. Yep, we can see it perfect, Bethany, thank you. Perfect, welcome to Providence, where it is a gorgeous day. And um, I'm just gonna run through um, actually a lot of work because I think that if you're shopping for grad schools, one good way to get a feel for them is to know how the work matches the curriculum and sort of get a sense of the ethos of the student body and all that kind of stuff. So I think this is gonna take about 45 minutes, so bear with me. Um, but um, anyway, we're in Providence. We are housed on the fifth floor of a, a building that has many grad programs in it called the Center for um, Integrated Technology, otherwise known as CIT. Um, this is a, uh, a grad cohort poster from last year. Um, we're still waiting for the one from this year to be completed. But last year was sort of the first year people were busting out of a total COVID um, on screen. Uh, behavior. So that's capturing that. Um, I'm going to talk about a two-year and a three-year track towards our MFA. Um, the three-year track's first year builds formal, formal and conceptual skills in a core sequence of rigorous design studios, and those are <clears throat> grad form one and two, grad type one, two, and three, grad type design, and the history of graphic design. And um, grad type one is uh, taught by different people at different times, but it's got a sort of um, introductory playful nature and also a, a sort of structure, uh, structural nature of the rules of typography. But this was just a quick one week thing about um, finding type in the environment. Um, graphic design history, this is a classic Doug Scott assignment, um, bringing two historical design figures together in, in a kind of dialogue in a timeline. Um, that is joined. Um, grad form two starts to stretch uh, from analog tools, really hands-on stuff to processing and other code type skills. Um, and basically the entire first year of, of the three-year program, you're really doing a lot of formal experimentation using um, you know, different tools for black and white, for color and so forth. And you're also doing a lot of um, typography. And this, these are just a couple of shots from the final review um, that happens at the end of the year. The top is probably work from grad type one and two. And then at the bottom is a type specimen from um, grad type design with, with Cyrus Highsmith, where each student actually develops a full, um, a full font family. Um, at the end of the three-year program, first year, there is a splendid display of everybody's work. Um, you know, we sort of spend the day looking at everybody's body of work that's happened over the course of the year to look for patterns and in, in, um, in form and concept and so forth, so that when they merge with the two-year program in the, in the next year, they're off and running. So at the same time, um, 
everyone is involved, all the incoming students are involved in a uh, seminar, Critical Issues in Graphic Design, which mixes the incoming two and three-year students so that they all begin their time at RISD together. And it, it's really meant to honor all points of entry into graduate study here, and also to build a sense of context for critical thought and practice in graphic design. Um, then there's a studio sequence. Um, Grad Studio One is in the fall called Graphic Response, and it merges the three-year track students in their second year with the new incoming class of the two-year track. So you get a sort of new mix of a cohort. Um, and what it does is it really mixes varying skills and interests, talents, and experience. And in these grad studios, there are these common design briefs that provoke um, individual exploration of content across varied graphic forms. People who are coming in from <clears throat> professional jobs sort of need to recalibrate and, and not jump directly to conclusions. And the people in the three-year track um, are already used to exploring, but um, want to really start to engage with content of their own making. Um, something that we do to start off and have done for a couple of years is a, a project called Atlas. It takes about four weeks, but everybody does a 16 page signature in what will become a um, collaborative volume. And so there's successive uh, rounds of sharing that. And then the final class is looking at the final versions of these things pinned up but also sequencing um, the book together. So everybody has their own little signature and we all sit around and try to figure out how the heck this thing starts and ends and um, how one thing leads to another. And I would have to say that's kind of a theme of the grad program. How does one thing lead to another? Where do ideas come from and so forth? So that kind of permeates all the work. This is last year's final copy of Atlas, the cover on the left. And then uh, three other years worth of them um, done by other uh, grad cohorts. Um, during the COVID year, uh, we didn't have physical class. So John Caserta and I had to sort of figure out a way to do this project um, digitally. And it was also the census year. So we used the tracks of, of Providence as a way to pair students to go explore very specific um, uh, areas. And in this case, it was two people who had the Blackstone Boulevard Swan Point Cemetery area. And um, so it becomes this conversation between the two people um, you know, in a web format. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a consolidated format of uh, web format of the entire class, but everything was equally um, kind of amazing in that regard. This year, we um, I'm co-teaching with Ramon Tejada and we took a field trip one day, really fun to a um, print shop uh, at, um, um, it's called Counterform. I'm sorry, I blanked on that for a moment. Counterform run by two alum, uh, Tatiana Gomez and uh, Jose Menendez. And they allowed us to make polymer plates from shapes that the students had uh, provided and, and text and so forth. And we ran off um, copies and just basically had a really good time. And some of those might make them into the final atlas and others might just become uh, small elements. That's Tatiana and Jose, who incidentally met here in the program, married and still live here and both teach full time. She at MassArt and he's at Northeastern. And that's Jack, their, um, Jack, their master printer. Another um, signature project of Grad Studio One has been a um, an emphasis on sort of primary object research. And we take them to the Providence Public Library. It's also a way to get out of the ivory tower of the school and go to a public library and see what a public holding um, can be for uh, things you can actually put your hands on. This is a, an elephant folio book of Piranesi's um, etchings of Trajan's column. And it's just, it's just incredible. So the point is that each person chooses an object um, from a selection of, the, of which this is one. Then they develop um, a, a conceptual and uh, formal response over 10 plates that have fronts and backs. And they're using Aristotle's categories to do that. So it's about position, time, um, action, affection, state, and so forth. It's just a way to focus people on very particular aspects of those projects. And this was sort of the, the day where everybody presented what they had. And you can see um, Jack's interpretation of Trajan's column on vellum, or I mean, on uh, mylar there. He was interested in the fact that the interior has a spiral 
um, stairway in it, which you, you can't see. He, he came also from architecture, by the way, to the three-year program. So it's interesting when people sort of bring pieces of their prior knowledge into contact with um, really an open selection of things and what they select becomes a kind of wayfinding thing for their interests. Um, what he discovered in subsequent research, which is also part of this, you choose an object, you do this formal analysis, um, was that many of these, many classical sculptures actually were brightly colored. And for some reason, we only see them as white, um, pure white sculptures when we see them in museums and so forth and on these monuments. So he did a, a sort of fun interpretation of polychromatic um, application where he 3D scanned pieces of an, an antiquity and cast them in plaster and then had his classmates paint them. And he made this complicated um, plexiglass box which has the, the pristine things on top, an intermediary um, version, and then the, the wildly interpretive ones. But you can also see his, um, his other piece in the background. And again, you know, we have a lot of time of critical dialogue around the table and, and during pinups where it really gets interesting to find out what people are thinking about. Um, Zoe chose a, a, a difficult object, but a fascinating object. It's a Samuel band, uh, which is a bound volume of all different sizes of pamphlets from um, the Civil War era and uh, <clears throat> pro-abolition, but also some that are uh, brazenly pro-slavery. And she created, she also discovered that some, uh, some of the editions of this had been printed on silk for posterity. And so she took off on the idea of fabric for her templates and created a kind of call and response um, then and now to each side, drawing from the original object for some of the, the visual language, but then supplying a, a whole kind of um, typographic and numerical language of her own. And then what she did for her extended project, and, and that's the piece that happens after the plates, is to really realize those in banner form and found a site to hang them here on the campus, which is a, a passageway um, well-traveled um, between Benefit Street and Market Square, which used to be the slave trading um, zone of Providence. So it's it's a very, it was a very smart um, sighting for a spatial um, expression of this work. And you could see one side of them going down the stairs. Um, and we had we had our crit outside so we could appreciate them. And then you see the other side when you go back up the stairs from Market Square. Um, just to run through a couple more of these, you know, just in the spirit of how where do ideas come from and how does one thing lead to another? Um, uh, graphic designers are always responding to something. So it's not like we're just coming up with ideas on our own. So that's part of the, the goal of this project is to give, give people something to respond to. Um, in this case, the Book of American Woods is a, a really special um, edition that has these razor thinly sliced pieces of wood that are cut three different ways on these individual plates. And um, Min Rung decided to pursue uh, a focus on measurement for her, for her sort of first analysis. And then for her longer project, she completely jumped away from that topic um, and, and wanted to make a kind of three-dimensional um, diagram. So she did a timeline of wars with a, a whole system where the um, circumference of, of circles was the magnitude of fatalities, the number of pages was how many years the war lasted. Um, one year is uh, two pages. Etc. And so when you open the book, she had also gone to the trouble of laser cutting um, the results of her data search so that it showed things really viscerally because of the burn marks from the laser cutting. But um, that World War II, for instance, didn't last that long, but had a huge number of fatalities, whereas these um, civil wars uh, that continue over the world, you can see how they bore down for years and years and years with uh, with fatalities over time. So that's that's a kind of interpretation of, of the American Woods book that just went in a direction that completely set her in uh, onto a thesis path. Um, another person, um, Jeff, was from California and, and was interested in this book, which was ostensibly a history of California by people who'd actually never even been there. Um, 
1759. So they were post, you know, postulating about the um, inhabitants and so forth. And he grew up in LA. He has a whole collection of Los Angeles County um, street atlases and, and California maps. And so what he decided to do um, as his response was to think about um, places that can't be mapped, um, disputed territories. And this project was done many, many years ago. And what blows my mind is how current um, the issues still are, right? We're still having territorial disputes in formal, former Soviet territories. And things like the South Asia Sea um, tell us about the maritime troubles. So I think people happen onto things that have real ideas that have real agency and um and it's it's great to see them uh tangled with this complicated content he also made a, a map that was tiled so you could remove pieces and put new ones in you know depending on how the borders had changed and his for his final review he had everything laid out for us to admire um so showing him is a way to bridge into how uh grad studio two takes off where the fall studio um, left them. Um, it's called discursive formations, which is simply a way of saying that graphic design thesis as a is a is a discourse over related uh, a related field of objects, right? That that everything you're making in every class could be considered thesis work if it's teasing out the same ideas. So in uh, Grad Studio 2, the designer's understanding of sequence rhetoric and metaphor and interpretive and narrative skills are meant to build. And they're encouraged to um, start to communicate, communicate across multiple methods and modes of making. So for him, um, again, years ago, the Occupy movement was going on right at that moment. And he was taken with how many um, places it was happening at once, but it had a sort of sameness to it because all of them seem to be located in parks that were somehow corporate parks. Um, there's so little public land left um, that he decided to sort of adopt a, a, a corporate standards manual as a way to document this work. Um, in the way that he worked, not to belabor it, but he would uh, find the Occupy site, in this case, it's Providence's Burnside Park. From that, he derived a kind of abstract mark, which you see on the right. Every city involved in his study then had its own particular footprint there on the left. And on the right, he's showing how they all blur together, but each city can pull forward out of that field to become a distinct um, mark. And it kind of has the visual language of, uh, you know, constructivism or supremacism. And um, whether he meant that or not, it's, it's, it's the language of protest. Um, and then he, he also wanted uh, people to be able to upload all of their social media images and um, that they would go into some randomizing thing that would download a combination of the image, text that, that said occupy a certain city and a footprint. So the image and the footprint are from Providence, but the text says occupy Orlando. And it was just a way to show that everything was happening all, all over at the same time for the same reasons. Um, so these core courses are also complemented by electives in, in many things. Um, graphic design department offers them. Grad Studies Commons has a listing of interdisciplinary studio and seminar courses for grads. Digital Plus Media Program has research clusters that invite you know, cross-disciplinary work. And there, then there's other cross-listed courses from other disciplines and formal practices like textiles or ID. Um, furniture, et cetera. Um, and if you're if you're really shopping online to look at what kinds of courses RISD offers, you should definitely look at these other grad programs um, that are basically non-studio programs, but they have incredibly wonderful seminars and, and other lecture courses. And those programs are Nature, Culture, and Sustainability Studies, Theory and History of Art and Design, Global Arts and Cultures, and Teaching and Learning in Art and Design, which also um, can confer a teaching certificate um, after you take a certain number of hours. We have our own dedicated GD grad elective in the fall. It was taught uh, by Kelsey Elder last year. It was called Variable, um, where he taught variable type technology. Um, got some really interesting work out of that. This year, Eric Lee is teaching um, web-based uh, um, composition uh, called his course Source. 
There's also um, a popular elective with grads, well, and with undergrads too, but grads really love this class because it really pushes them to make a lot of form every week. It's called Newly Formed, co-taught by Kathleen and Chris Sloboda, and it usually runs in the spring. Um, there are also, like I said, cross-disciplinary electives like digital materiality, which several people have taken, um, offered by the textiles program. And that, that program incidentally is on the same floor as us in, um, in CIT. So it's really great to, to know that there's looms right on the other side of the wall from the plotter. Um, then there are also independent projects and collaborations. And, and this was a collaboration between Jack Tufts, who's from New Orleans, um, and Austa Thrastadar from Iceland, and both of them having a conversation about climate precarity and, um, and landscape and a sense of place and home and, and so forth. And so this printed um, folio was part of a, a larger installation that they, uh, that they mounted in the RISD um, GD Commons, which is a kind of gallery space that we have in our department. So then there's a five week session that separates our semesters. Um, winter session is a time to take courses outside your major or to propose uh, independent projects that allow you to work at your own pace. Um, grants can also teach at this time from introductory type and graphic design courses offered through our department to non-majors um, non to um, proposing experimental courses of their own making and going through that process where they actually start to build a teaching portfolio. Um, some of the kinds of crazy stuff that happens in winter session, which is only five weeks. So some people just want to get outside. And this is from years ago, but Mark really was interested in the environment. And um, as he picked his wife up from the train, because um, she lived in Boston, he would notice this gush of wind that came before and after the train and developed a, a drawing tool with it, which he then also took to the beach with uh, a little contraption where he used sailcloth to, to record the wind, you know, and in a kind of mark making way without any real intention, but it was just, it was a very lively experiment. Um, he was also taking something called emergent digital at the time in, in digital plus media and learned how to, to actually begin to capture live data of the weather and wind and ended up um, doing some plotter prints of of that data, as well as um, I think dynamic and more interactive uh, data uh, visualizations of uh, conditions changing. Um, other people will use winter session to pick up a skill that they lack or that they're just interested in working into. Um, Lewis took a UI UX course and created this really convincing app called the Dream Journal. And I really wish that he would realize it because I would use it. Um, it's so well thought out. It's it's just about a, a kind of diary meets calendar meets, you know, um, fictional storytelling, but it keeps track of themes and, um, and you know, your, your moods basically. Um, pretty interesting project that uh, he, just forced himself to learn every single thing about how uh, how that interface would function for a user. Um, other people just wanna do something that they otherwise would never do. And in this case, um, I'm not sure if Ben used CoWorks, which is our, our makerspace downstairs, or whether this also came out of digital materiality um, with textiles, but this is with using the digital embroidery machine. I think it's from CoWorks. Um, where he just took the time to embroider on money, um, making a kind of time is money uh, or vice versa statement, just to reveal the, the um, decorative motifs on $1 bills, actual dollar bills. So winter session can be very fun and expansive. Um, and then spring semester comes and, um, the grad seminar too awaits the three-year people, uh, the, the people who are in the grad studio sequence. Um, and basically the, the goal of this seminar versus the first seminar is that this really starts to establish thesis territories um, that have begun to emerge out of all of the formal expl explorations that people are doing in the studio classes, as well as research and writing that, that they're coming to on their own or from other classes. And then at the end of this course, just to capture this um, as a kind of 
compelling document that leads into uh, the thesis year. Uh, there's a thesis compendium. And some of these are almost like proto um, thesis books. People really get into them. Um, on the other hand, some people do uh, a web-based version. And in this case, Kit Sun Lee um, did that because it was totally appropriate to their topic, which was about um, the internet as, as a thing. So basically Kit programmed this so that everything you clicked on would create a user log, you know, to kind of reveal the mach machine learning, the ghost in the machine, if you will. And I'll show you some more of Kit's um, work in a minute to extend on this. Um, so the thesis at RISD is really a consistent approach to persistent ideas, and I will add there over time. It's a line of inquiry across multiple forms, and it builds a thesis body of work um, that might even be beginning, you know, as soon as you start in Grad Studio One. It might even have pieces in it from your first year of the three-year program. And then the thesis process advances also the seminar's foundational work through um, visual form and critical writing, in the final years, um, studio courses, which are grad thesis one and two, they parallel the same structure um, as grad studio one and two. Um, I'm going to play part of Kit's 10-minute uh, presentation that is called a thesis position presentation, which all the students give in the fall of their thesis year, just to establish what where they're headed and what they're thinking about for the benefit of their, their faculty, their fellow students, and and everyone else, but I'm going to kind of scrub forward here, so bear with me um, uh, if I fumble. Hey, everybody, my name is Kit Sun Lee, and welcome to my crib, the internet. All right, so Kit goes on to explain what the internet is with all kinds of examples about Trojan horsing and what a meme is, and narrative structures, and uh, algorithmic uh, machine learning, and so forth. And I'm scrubbing to the very end where. Um, they start to suggest work that is is ahead. And that's part of the, the reason that these presentations are given, which is to um, alert people that uh, that they have work in the in the works. Let me get it lined up. All right. Bring into what I'm calling Benware. Benware meaning benignant or even benevolent software. See, it's a malware symbol, but it's modified. So it looks like two people shaking hands or a smiley face. Some memoir projects I have coming up include DLC, or distance learning chalking, uh, which is a computationally generated glyph system based on war chalking that helps students find open Wi-Fi access nodes. And there's also Fractur Leet, uh, that's a variable font illustrating the interpolation between 2014's Gamergate um, and online gamer spaces in general with the rise of QAnon and the alt-right. Benware is designed as virus. It promises convenience, novelty, play, all the benefits of its host. It exploits the vulnerabilities in everyday interaction to annoy, to break things. It's a poltergeist, the friendly ghost in your computing machine that proves to you that spirits exist so you know to watch for them. It does these little harms in the manner of a vaccine in service of alerting the social body to the threat of its structure. So like you can get your flu shot at CVS, I'm opening up my non-FDA approved internet pharmacy at this link. If you'd like to install some Benware on your device, you can download the Chrome extension I use today, along with this icon set over there. Thanks. And uh, this year we actually had them do only five minute talks, which were live um, in, in Kit's year, they needed to be broadcast online. Um, and even in five minutes, you get an incredible uh, sense of, of people's trajectory um, and, and promise going forward. So thesis one and two really span this final year of the program. And as I said, the thesis takes on its body through all of the work you do, including other electives and independent projects. And um, our structure is really supportive here. We have a team of thesis advis advisors for um, each student derived from faculty. And then there's also a trio of, or this year there's four because we have so many grants, uh, of visiting external critics from the field who help guide critical thesis dialogue throughout the year. And um, all of this culminates in the, the final MFA reviews. There's a December review at the end of the first um, semester 
of, um, of thesis two, I think this is what this is from. And um, this is for Abadian's setup where we really get a chance to stand in the midst of many, many different kinds of pieces of work and play. And then finally in May, there are final reviews held down in the Koffler Gallery, which is at the base of, of CIT, um, where everybody sort of stands in the midst of their work and, and presents it for lack of a better word, um, sometimes, extemp sometimes extemporaneously, sometimes scripted, um, but you really get a sense of who, who does video motion and who is a type designer. And there's Min with her measured world. Um, and um, five, five theses for a thesis, which was a, a, a kind of fantastically recursive idea. Um, another one um, where you could actually print out aspects of the thesis book there in the studio. Um, and the thesis books themselves are, are there as part of this whole body of work. And the thesis book is this kind of culminating catalog as well as original text and um, book design of its own. Um, so the final expressions of the thesis are indeed when it goes public, I would say, both in the form of the thesis book and also in a group exhibition. Our graphic design grads collaborate on the concept and design of their part of the 19 discipline RISD MFA grad show, which takes place in the, um, the convention center, uh, which is a rather large and entropic space. Um, of convention halls uh, that are divided up for each department. So it's really a challenge every year to, to make a lively um, presence. This year was a pop-up shop idea where people additioned pieces for sale and um, it was wildly popular. They also had their other work um, posted on the wall. Um, you could go away with, uh, I think I spent $250 at this show um, and have a collection of everything <laughs> that the grads made. Um, and they developed a whole system for it. Uh, and I think it was the uh, very beginning of Squarespace um, payment system. So it was really a lot to figure out. A couple of years later, um, this group knew that what they wanted their outcome to be would be a multiple that people could take away, but they weren't quite sure what that was going to be. Um, but they started to think about how it would be displayed, you know, and would it be on printers uh, pallets, would it be on benches? Uh, would the benches be configured in front of posters by each of them that people could tear away um, multiples of? Or would the benches wind through, you know, the, the exhibition of other people's work? You can see the apparel, um, the textile people there, the furniture people there, that's the flavor of the overall exhibition. So in the end, they just made this incredibly meta thing. Um, sorry, this is not a, this is a very soft image, but um, basically the catalog is also the show and it's also the description of the show, which is also the name of the show. You get the idea. And on the back cover of this is the floor plan of the convention center showing the red square um, of where they were located literally in the very back corner. So they just decided to go with that and um, made a very deadpan uh, meta statement about the catalog being the show and you could just take it away with you. Um, inside that multiple, everybody uh, contributed their abstract text, um, uh, representative work and um, very lively group. Um, also there, I think throughout there's the center folds out into four separate posters. Um, everybody had a sort of signature object that they identified uh, their thesis with, um, which is something that's happened more than once. So anyway, um, all in all, a, a very um, successful idea. And then um, every year, the website, uh, at least up until now, which I'll talk about in a minute, every, every year there would be a bespoke website by the department that reflected that year's um, show and the, the group themselves with the ability to search through and actually find people. Um, this group actually did an index as well of all of the kinds of things that came up from manifest destiny to um, uniforms to um, Keisha. Um, a couple of years later, there was another kind of take on um, that convention center setting uh, as, a, as a kind of corollary to a big box store. And so this became a kind of um, 
research piece for how that could play out um, with, you know, obvious suggestion of a color there with the yellow bins, um, a notion of things stacked and so forth. And this group really wanted to make a comment about graphic design straddling um, the worlds between commerce and um, and the art world, you know, white cube presentation. Um, and so they also wanted to edition works for sale um, and come up with a, uh, they came up with a theme of shop and show as a kind of switching switching identity for their um, their exhibition. Uh, while Marcos developed a bespoke typeface for it, um, all of these labels were designed, which then went on to boxes full of the editions. Um, uh, everybody jumped in laser cutting sign um, pieces, painting them, mounting them, joining um, forces to put the boxes together, you know, despite massive fatigue, I'm sure. Um, and then ultimately, this is how it looked from the outside on approach. And then the night of the opening was kind of a madhouse and everybody was in there buying things. Um, everything that's had yellow uh, surrounding it was for sale. So all of those things could be procured. Um, someone was always there with the with the payment system and it was really ambitious and, and super, super energetic. And so everywhere um, people had additioned these books for sale um, and other, other kinds of multiples. There was also this book, which is the catalog of the show um, for sale in the shop. And it was also on the outside wall. It turns out that you could also purchase the catalog online. And here they, they say explicitly graphic design is a product uh, of the studio, the gallery and the marketplace. And, and that the exhibition was meant to show that hybrid character. You can also view the book online as well as buying the book online. So this is all of the work mounted in gallery space. Um, again, the Koffler Gallery downstairs with pieces that you otherwise wouldn't be seeing in the shop aspect. Um, but the clever, uh, the clever conceit here is that none of this is real. Um, it's actually all been fabricated uh, and digitally mapped into the gallery space with help from Professor Tom uh, Waddell, who's a master photographer and collaborated with them to, to really get it to look convincing. Um, another year, uh, another approach. In this case, just a kind of pocket alcove area. They're like, we don't want a big space. We want screens um, that all are, are synchronized. So again, I'm going to scrub forward to a place where I think, yeah, I think this begins a kind of um, sequence. And the sound is incidental, by the way. Um, it has nothing to do with it. Again, people had a signature object. They had a number that related to the wall names as well as a multiple takeaway that was there, a newsprint takeaway. And then they leafed through or swiped through their work in a syncopated way. And they had done all of these um, videos separately with each person um, responding to a metronome for rhythm. And then they did their level best to sync them up. Um, it was pretty fantastic. Um, and again, their website um, for that show, you know, reflected that that action and the multiplicity of it. Um, and then you could zoom in on individual people. This is uh, Ramike Forbes, who is currently the creative director at Jacobin Magazine, um, amazing designer. And um, yeah, I think that's that's good. Another year, um, they dispensed with showing work all together and just came up with signature glyphs for each person. And, and they built this plinth right in the center of the space that, that um, pronounced their curatorial statement and had the thesis books uh, specially wrapped to nest within that statement. So when you took the book out, it, you could still put it back in the same place, but it, it really was a, a physical way of showing that each of the theses were connected to this overarching curatorial statement. Um, this was their website, the theme being it's in the bag. Um, they had a little swag bag there too with I think a t-shirt, a pen, a squeeze ball, I don't know. Some of those things are still floating around the studio. 
But you know, I mean, you guys will have a chance to to look at this presentation again online if you dare, and um, you can really look at the names of the people in these classes and look them up and really look at their work. Um, like this is Min Rung Sun, um, who is actually at two by four now and has been for many years, but. But this linked to a site where the thesis book lived with some professional work. And, um, and the point being that people want to be able to find you after, um, after you graduate. Um, and it's a delirious thing to graduate from grad school. Um, what happens at the very end is that uh, in that same convention hall, in the adjacent hall is where the commencement ceremony happens, then families and grads just spill over into the grad exhibition. And um, again, deliriously happy or deliriously tired. Um, this particular year had developed a kind of digital cave behind that blue wall where when you entered, um, you, you could interact with this uh, projected um, from an interface that you could, you could you know, keyboard that you could work on. Um, you could rescale these things, you could click on individuals, you could click back and forth between books and um, work, and uh, in this case, you know, reveal the, the thesis abstract, the, the written portion, which sets us um, to understand the basic premise of, of the thesis, and that's common to all graduate programs. Um, Two final copies of the thesis book are, are required in the end to act as a repository for the MFA thesis work. Um, these books can be so many different things. They're not one template. They're not, there's no expectation that they're one particular thing and they really are quite incredible. Um, copies of them, physical copies are in the, the RISD Fleet Library and, and uh, Hopefully they haven't walked away from the shelves. Some have. Um, some of the more delicately crafted ones are in special collections and we need to ask permission to see them. I have the full set in my office at school and enjoy sharing them with um, classes over time. Um, it's a truly a great day when people get their printed books back from Mixum or Lulu or Blurb or wherever they're you know, printing theirs and submit them. Um, it's usually a beautiful May day. They then go out and have fun. Um, those books were on display uh, representing the grad portion of the um, of the department in a recent triennial um, where every department gets a triennial, you know, duh, every three years up in the Woods Gallery, uh, Woods Gary Gallery up the hill, um, several rooms. It mixes inter undergrads and grads. But in this case, we set out the the um, the recent thesis books on the table for people to peruse um, and really start to see how the work that they had done in classes and over time had started to build a vocabulary uh, and, a, and an inquiry. Um, in this case, Vi um, had used the grammar of ornament from the library to, to create a kind of new syntax of form and motion, and in this case, sound. She really did a lot of amazing experiments. Um, almost all of the recent theses are viewable in digital form at digitalcommons.risd.edu. You have to go through the search engine there to uh, make your way to the graphic design master's thesis um, area. Um, and I'm showing this just because it's the last of the, um, the bespoke uh, um, websites before COVID and um, with the theme of circulation and with the, like Olivia, you know, every time it clicks on one of these people, I know exactly where they are and exactly what they're doing. And um, they also know what each other are doing, uh, which is a kind of wonderful thing about the alumni family, I will call them. I use that word um, cautiously, but I think in this case, it, it actually fits. Um, in the COVID year, um, the move was made to the museum platform, publication platform, which uses a very particular um, interface. And uh, it was a bold experiment and God bless them for doing this because it was a way to um, still highlight all of the grad work in all of these various departments despite the fact that we couldn't have a physical exhibition. So the graphic design one um, 
is a little twitchy. You have to kind of chase things. Uh, there's an info button at the bottom right, which is you really have to grab and it then reveals that you can get to their abstract, their book, their website, and so forth. It's worth taking a look at um, with a steady hand, I will say. They insisted on programming their own site and not using one of the templates from that year, but you know, it all worked out. Um, last year, uh, no, this is 2021, not last year. Um, Everett, uh, Epstein programmed and designed all of this. And, and at the same time, um, there's all this ancillary material that goes with these um, design projects of making the site. There's also posters and um, e-blasts, ads that go in area papers and all manner of things. So it's always a good kind of gig for one of our GD grads to build a little portfolio of, of work around this. Um, this past year, uh, I'm not showing you a motion piece of this, but um, we did have a physical show. Um, the prior year, 2021, had a very abbreviated physical show, which was limited, um, you know, to just a few areas, and it it was a it was an attempt. But this was a full on show um, this last spring. Uh, this just reminds us how many amazing um, grad programs there are here, and that's not even all of them. We're ending at printmaking. Um, what happens after you graduate? Um, you get to go out in the world and, and be great. And um, this is a picture taken literally just a couple weeks ago when a group of alum said, we all want to get together um, after the Printed Matter Book Fair and have a, have a beer and catch up. This is just some of them. I think they kept coming after I left. But um, Literally in this picture, there's like seven different years of graduating um, MFAs and it's they just all are in touch all the time and so many um, connections between them. Um, so to end it here, I will say that um, these websites are all viewable online with links to individual years, even the ones that aren't part of the um, the museum. And then there's also RISD GD alumni everywhere who can tell you um, all about their experience here in the grad program. So just reach out to them, you know, and I'm sure that current grads would do that as well, although they're a little busy. Um, be sure also to check out our departmental site, um, gd.risd, which uh, keeps up to date with what's going on here. And with that, I will stop sharing. And um, I think we move to a question time in a different um Hold on. Hi. We move to a question. Hello. Hello. We move to a question thing in a different Zoom room, right? Correct. Yes. Um, so thank you, everybody. That was a great presentation, Bethany. Um, super thorough. I just put a link in the chat. Um, that's to a Zoom meeting that's going to be hosted by Bethany. It will be more of um, a meeting style, an intimate Q&A style. Um, so you're welcome to start navigating to that link now. I will stay here until um, four o'clock to make sure that everybody gets over there okay. Um, but uh, the session was recorded. Um, give us about a week. We'll be posting them to a YouTube channel um, and we'll be sharing that with everybody. But um, thank you so much. Thank you, Bethany. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. much. And Eva, why don't you come to the Q&A with me? Do you want to? I don't know. Eva Laporte is the dynamic and fabulous program assistant who knows all, sees all, and um, and is wonderful. Say hello, Eva. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really her voice. Uh, all right, I'm going to move. I'm going to move to the other uh, Zoom room. But it's been a pleasure, and I'll see anyone with questions there in momentarily. Okay. Thank you so much, Bethany. Goodbye, admissions. Bye.